Previously on Sons of Speed. What the hell is this? This, Chris, is a Mustang. What makes a Mustang a Mustang? Instant torque for the win! You just lost to the base Mustang. <laughs> I'm totally warming up to the Mach-E as being an actual Mustang. Sitting down for the first time, this is definitely a unique interior. I mean, you can definitely yes. tell it's Mustang gas car inspired, but it's it's a unique, it's a, it has a uniqueness of its own. Right, they didn't just throw an electric motor into a Mustang. Exactly. And they didn't just copy the interior. They they borrowed some design elements. So you got the double buttress mm -hmm. dashboard, yep. um, but obviously you got a giant screen here uh, that you don't get in the, the standard car, and um, you've got and, and that, that that dash is kind of cool looking. I mean, it's, it's just minimal. It just tells you yes. what you need to know because you're going to get all your other information on the big screen. But it's cool because like some of the other, um, just to compare some of the other Tesla models, I think the Model Three only has the one in the center. Yes. And and you know you if what if you want to know how fast you're going you, you have to kind of look over to the side and that is a complaint a lot of people have about that car and it's something that Ford directly addressed this was kind of their fix to yeah Tesla's and it makes sense issue and it shows you your range and your battery power and your speed and the speed limit and the um, and a lot of the information about your radar cruise control this does not yet have autonomous driving it's coming uh, with $600 for three years uh, over the summer. Sounds like a pretty good deal. Yeah, the, the hardware is already there, so it's just yeah. an over the air. And update. this is, yeah, over the air, just like the Tesla yep. and all the newer cars. So you wake up one morning and and now you have autonomous driving. You have it on your, on your because car. right now I could I could put the radar cruise control on after about 15 seconds. It'll tell me to put my hands on the wheel, sometimes a little bit less. Uh, the rest of this interior, though, pretty comfortable, um, really nice, nice thick wheel. Yeah, I was admiring the wheel because I mean it looks like out of like a sports car. Yeah, and it's got all your controls on it. Um, obviously, you don't need paddle shifters because there's only one gear. It does everything you need it to do, and the radar cruise control is once you get it going, you have to play with it a little bit. It's a little confusing at first, but once you sort of get into it, it's it's fine. It has wireless charging, although that is the one part in this car that I have uh, been having issues with. Okay. Uh, it's not just the one part, but uh, you get this error that comes up almost always with pretty much any phone I've put down on the pad. Um, so I've taken to just plugging it into charge, but um, it'll tell you like, you know, it's, uh, there's some sort of connection error. So I don't know oh, if really? that's because it's just a very early production model. Maybe yeah, there's something yeah, that it, possibly. that's, that's uh, a quick fix. The other thing that this car has that's really cool is you don't need the key to drive it because it's got oh, a Ford Pass and oh, you know, an app, an electric yeah. key yeah. on your phone. Your phone is your key, basically. Um, and you can put a password in. So if you lost your phone, it's stolen, dead, whatever, you can get in the car, you can even start the car and drive it without anything other than what's in your your head you know if you don't have your phone and then if you don't want to do your phone you can have the key but um the phone the app is really cool because it tells you where to charge the car and gives you a lot of details and information there but the problem is it works perfectly about 50 percent of the time and the other 50 percent it's just like you got to hit the, the button a few times or it, move it, your phone again around. this could be be pre-production yeah it things. could be a very early production pre-production issue but uh, I think they will work those kinks out. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a firmware update or something. Right. So, yeah. Other than that, though, you've got this giant panel. Oh, no, it's beautiful. Roof, which really nice. I had my kids in the back. They loved it from the back seat. It is just tinted. You cannot. There's no sunshade or anything yeah, I like see that. that. Yeah, it doesn't open. It's very cold here. We don't know what that's going to feel like when it's like 100 degrees outside. But it's tinted. It, it, it hopefully should do pretty good. Uh, you can sort of set the car to cool off um, remotely from that phone app as well. Okay. Got a lot of space. Yeah, you know, one thing about um, the Mustang car, the gas car, is you're kind of tight and you don't have a lot of space there's not to, a lot to of space put, to put stuff your, exactly to put your stuff your phone things like that you like putting your phone kind of in a cup holder but i mean obviously this is an suv you got more space inside of here so uh you're gonna find yep. you're gonna find those uh niceties um the one thing that looking down though that kind of bugs me um <laughs> i'm just i'm just not i'm not a dial person when i i, I want a lever 
there's a lot of backseat room. Uh, my kids yeah. are very tall. Uh, they're teenagers. They were fine back there. And you've got the trunk, which is pretty spacious as well, and the rear seats fold down. And you get a front trunk. Yes. Uh, frunk. You get a frunk. Yeah, yeah we <laughs> frunk around. Um, the frunk is cool because they put a drain plug in it, and you can fill it with ice, and you can, I guess not tailgate, you would be front gating it? Yes. That is so over the top. I mean, like, who thought of that? You know, like, <laughs> somebody was like, you know what would be really cool? <laughs> If we made this thing a giant yeah, yeah, yeah. rolling cooler, yeah, exactly. And put a bunch of beer in there, and, and, and uh, you know what? You can drive around with it too. Yeah. Now, currently, there's a bunch of dividers in there. I've seen people take those out so that you, you can actually have more usable space to put like a piece of luggage in there. But honestly, with as much space as it has in the back, I don't yeah. know that you'd use that. And also, you got uh, some drive modes here. I see you got uh, engage, whisper, and unbridled. Yes. So engage is your sort of balanced mode. They think of it as an everyday mode. In fact, it's described. You can hit the I button and it'll tell you. Ah, balanced drive fun and engaging. Fun and engaging. And then whisper. Seamless drive, calm and quiet. Mm, very good. This is something very close to what Lincoln is doing now with their drive modes. And unbridled. Exhilarating drive, machine and road align as one. Yes. Oh, wow. Let's hope you and the road don't align as one, because that would be a very <laughs> messy situation. But that's what I've been driving in is unbridled. Um, I think Ford is, even though Tesla is out there, they're a unique company, right? They have no dealerships. They have stores. They have a very... You know, where do you take it to get fixed? Yeah, because it's, it's, it, and also even their charging is, is different. It's different. They have a different plug and everything. So. Right. So it's like its own unique little animal, right? Ford and now you know Volkswagen with the ID. Four and a lot of other companies. It's not just Ford Volkswagen, but a lot of other companies are mainstreaming these cars. I think this though. I mean, if you think about the '65 Mustang, was a it just launched a an entire platform. Now, Ford's not doing that, but they're sort of doing more of what Apple did with the iPhone, which was wait till everybody else kind of comes out with something and then make it better or yeah. make it more mainstream. The only thing holding electric cars back is travel rate range and a speed of charging yes if if they can get you know 600 miles on a, on a range and they could make it where you could charge a car in a half an hour or less yep. or less I, there's no reason for a gas engine you know what i i predict this mark my words put this down on a calendar somewhere when it does happen i was the one who came up with this oh yeah <laughs> eventually eventually i don't know when but eventually, it will be that you pull your car into any parking space of any location anywhere, and it built into the parking space yeah. will be a wireless induction. charger. There'll be induction charger. Induction charger. Yeah. So basically, everywhere you go, you're topping off. Yeah, and I don't know and why you do couldn't do it in the roads. Exactly. You could do it. So road. you're charging while you're driving. Yes. I mean, how awesome would that be? So, and then, you know, they'll know, because this thing knows what car it is when you plug it in, I'm sure they'll have ways to say. To bill you. To bill you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you'll get billed. And that's how, that, and, and the politicians will figure this out and then they'll figure that that's how we're gonna tax you as well. Yeah. Because you're not paying any fuel taxes when you have a car like exactly. this. Exactly. So now they want to tax you per mile. And, and so it's, yeah, they always get their money. So I finally got some alone time in the Ford Mustang Mach-E. And we just had finished off with talking with Chris and comparing it to the gasoline Mustang. Now, after I've driven it a while, I just wanna kinda go over a couple of thoughts that I had. Uh, first of all, I really enjoyed driving this car. Um, to be honest with you, I've never driven, I've ridden in an electric car before, I've never driven one. My first impressions before were always, oh my gosh, electric car is just a glorified golf cart, you know? And, uh, but after having this car for, for three days, I really, I take that back. That instant torque, you just never get uh, you never get tired of it. It's it's great. I have to commend Ford that they did a great job here. Um, the the car is actually really tight. Um, I have personally a Ford Focus RS, uh, four years old now, and it feels like every week I find some new squeak or rattle somewhere. But here, I mean, granted, this car only has like five thousand miles on it, but 
it's really tight. There's a lot to like here. I love the infotainment center um, and that, that wonderful volume knob. Just, and even the way it was designed where it's kind of stuck on the screen. Beautiful, just really nice detail there. It's lower than a typical SUV, so you really don't get that you're up super high feel, but at the same time, you are definitely sitting taller than you would in a car. So it's kind of like that sweet spot between a car and an SUV as far as uh, your seating position, your height. But this car is designed more for a family that has another gasoline car. Let's face it, you, you still need a gasoline car to go on longer trips. Th this car, the way it is with its range, it's got the extended battery pack. Uh, so in the morning when it was 100% charged, it was showing about 248 miles on the uh, range meter there. So it was called 250. Now I un understand in California, they got a supercharger network, you know, every 20 miles, whatever. Uh, and that's fine, but here in Illinois, we don't. And also talking of superchargers, we're not talking a five minute fill up here. You know, you're gonna still be 20 minutes, half an hour, possibly 40 minutes waiting for your car. You know, and that's something that now you have to sort of figure into your day that you're gonna be sitting for half an hour or so waiting for your car to charge. Now that other states are starting to ban the internal combustion engine, the latest I heard was Washington State by the year uh, 2030. That's eight and a half years away. There's no way that we're gonna have that infrastructure set up around the entire country that we could meet that. I mean, heck, we can't even fix a pothole. It takes three years to fix a pothole, if that even. So, like I was saying, this car impressed me. Not just for how it drives, but just, just the serenity of it. But yet you have that speed when you need it, the acceleration, the pickup when you need it. So if you like this video, we would really appreciate if you could subscribe, hit the notification bell, and hit the like button. Again, thank you so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you soon in the next video. Take care.